teachers of Reddit. What is wrong with modern education? I teach elementary school. Kids need more than 20 minutes of brain break each day. Apparently where I teach did research and discovered recess led to a loss of instructional time. You know what else does? Six year olds literally not being able to sit for two minutes when they come to me for music because they've been doing work for two hours with no break. I'm sick of brain breaks. Get the kids outside and let them play. No, your kids do not need to do an activity video on Go Noodle. They need to go out and freaking play. And they need real pay class with an actual certified pay teacher. Also, music teachers are the best. I'm a former elementary music teacher. One unmentioned fact is giant class sizes. Who the heck thinks 45 kids in a room, ranging from gifted to special ed, is a good idea. In a 53 minute class, I can barely teach a lesson then touch base with everyone while they're working. It's insane. Elementary school teacher. The kids arriving to kindergarten are coming to school so damaged. Every classroom in our school has, young, kids with serious behavior problems. Not just talking out I'm saying throwing desks and chairs and stabbing people w scissors behaviors. There is no follow through, no support, no parent accountability and the one social worker in the school can't possibly handle the caseload. If you ask for help the problem is immediately turned back on you. What strategies have you tried? Where's your documentation of your modifications and on and on. A sticker chart isn't helping a child born into crisis who needs some real support. Meanwhile. The teachers spend hours a day managing outrageous behaviors while the quiet kids look on with wide eyes hoping to learn something. In the US at least, the problem with modern education is the integration of the American political system on educational policy. Why do we have so much testing? No child left behind formed that monster. Why do we have so little student accountability? Because schools and districts need to show student achievements to get federal funds so they fake it. What's worse than either of these is that we don't stick to any guiding educational philosophy. Every time a new person or party is elected, everything we do gets revamped. Because of that, there is very little consistency. Students graduate from high school having been pulled in a myriad of pedagogical directions without getting depth or sophistication in any of them. I teach college, so I see the K-12 problems with a lag. I had a colleague of mine complain the other day about how sharply student performance fell over the past 5 years. He couldn't understand how or why that could have happened. We talked about it for a while, and we came up with a logical, but unproven, hypothesis. No child left behind destroyed education in America. All people are born curious. That's why two year olds are notorious for asking why all the time. It's a manifestation of our innate curiosity. Unfortunately, that curiosity can get squelched fairly easily, and once destroyed, intellectual curiosity is nightmarishly difficult to revive. When George W. Bush passed the No Child Left Behind policies into law, schools shifted their focus in a fundamental way. Instead of learning for its own sake, learning became a means to an end. Why do we learn? We learn to pass the test. Nothing more, nothing less. The damage from this new approach to education showed up abruptly over the past half decade because of the ages of the children who had NCLB inflicted on them. If NCLB started in your junior year of high school, or in 7th grade, or even in 5th grade, your level of intellectual curiosity had already been fairly well cemented. Unfortunately, if you have younger kids, ones in their formative intellectual years told for a lifetime that learning is a means to an end, rather than an end in and of itself, you kill off their intellectual curiosity. In the last half decade, children who started no child left behind in third grade or earlier are reaching colleges. Many of them have no intellectual curiosity left. They're unteachable because they don't value learning for the sake of learning. NCLB was the most anti-intellectual law America ever implemented, and it has decimated a generation of innovators, inventors, scientists, and entrepreneurs. Laws regarding teaching are being made by people who have no idea what education, and an education system, entails. Lawmakers have a political focus, instead of an educational one. Isn't that laws in general? Tests, technology and an overcrowded syllabus. I've had to shut down interesting discussions because we need to progress through the topic. We put tests and tech before teaching kids to actually think. I remember getting to high school and having electives, 
where when an interesting class discussion broke out, the teacher would scrap the day's lesson and mediate the conversation instead. It was really strange to me, as a university path academic, to be told put away your books, let's talk. Critical thinking has taken so much of a backseat I'm wondering if it's still in the car. This is definitely a big one. I teach at a party college with a high acceptance rate. They're not very good writers and can only memorize. They really struggle with any sort of analysis at all. The push for college readiness. I was a short term sub. I'm working on becoming a teacher. Just need my bachelors. And in the month and a half I was there. I could tell which of my students were good to go for college. And which ones would suffer if forced to go to college. When one of the kids told me. Mies. Basid Mariner. I'm not going to college I knew it was to get a rise out of me. He told all his other teachers and they acted the way the school expects them to act. With shock and horror. And the insistence he did have to. I looked him in the eye and told him. Okay. That's fine. But you're going to go to somewhere like Western Tech so you can get a trade job. Like being a mechanic or an electrician or a plumber. I don't think anyone had told him up until that point that there was more to life than going to college. Members of the Board of Education in many municipalities often have zero teaching experience, yet feel qualified to dictate to teachers what should be included in the curriculum. The board's overreach extends beyond subjects and priorities to methods, as well. Some board members even attend classes and critique a teacher's performance, even though they've never taught a class themselves. At smaller schools they use their leverage to prop up their own kids in school, a freaking nightmare trying to write up a school board kid. We are told through our entire training that kids have different brains. They can use their talents to show their knowledge in a zillion different ways. Everyone is individual they say, no two kids think the same way. Then we give them all a standardized test and the government uses the data as fact to rank schools, teachers, and all sorts of bulls. It makes zero sense and drives me up the freaking wall. The thing that would improve it the most is proper parental involvement, not helicoptering, but parents reinforcing at home and expecting their children to learn. This can't be legislated, it's cultural. The problems stem from top-down rules, no matter how well intended, whether that's coming from the administration or the union. Excellent teachers who know how to make learning happen with students who have the attention span of a gnat need more latitude. Not more silly programs or tactics that administration wants to try out or safeguards that care more about a teacher's retirement than the student's education. The best way to reward them is not to promote them into administration, but keep them in the classroom where they can make the most impact with what they're gifted and pay them the salary of the administration position to which you wanted to promote them. There's a few, but by far the biggest demo is the manpower. If you hired 5x as many teachers and cut the classes from 30 students down to 6, I bet the majority of teachers would feel like they can get most kids through the state tests even as they are now. And just to add to that point, every 4 years we get some frick nut politician, who has no background in education, claiming he's gonna fix education by doing something like throwing an iPad in every student's hand, you know. Cause kids love technology, of course that's the key to fixing public education. It's so simple, when I'm reality, kids love iPads, but they want to watch videos and play games on them, not do math problems. It's really backwards. Source, math teacher in NY for a decade, left a year ago for greener pastures. The freaking tests, I have to spend my entire year teaching to the test. You think that's just a phrase? It's not. My entire purpose is to get the kids to pass the end of course exam. Kids who don't speak English and who are reading 5 grade levels below where they should be are expected to pass a test that is so completely unfair that it makes no sense at all. If they don't pass, my pay is deducted. I can lose my job. I am rated as ineffective. No matter why they don't pass. If a kid misses 100 days of school, I am to blame when that student doesn't pass the test. I hate the test. Besides testing parents that everyone else has already said, the overemphasis on technology. My school gives every single child a laptop and we are expected to use them at least a few times a week. In theory, we're using the limitless potential of the internet to enrich our learning. In practice, they spend all class playing games, as our web filter only stops us teachers who care to follow the rules, or googling answers. 
and while I do my best to patrol and stop this, I'm one person versus 25 plus children determined to do nothing. The lack of accountability for students and how detrimental it is to them growing up to become adults. We have so many students that have not been allowed to fail. Either mom and dad come to the rescue or the educator takes the fall. I teach high school, and it's the first time for these kids that they are even allowed to fail. They have been told they are the best and brightest their entire lives. When they encounter hardships, they have no idea how to cope. They end up becoming very stressed, anxious and sometimes depressed. Because of this, modern education, at least in my area, has been trying to take away stress factors instead of teaching kids how to manage them. It's so bad that next year we may not even be allowed to give students anything below a 50%, possibly even for work they do not turn in. Administrators who tell teachers how to teach and are out of touch with the classroom, all of them. We can all talk theory or write some beautifully written book on how to teach. But if you can't relate to students or the teachers who are working in the trenches there's no point. Also, not a single decision is made with students in mind. It's all about money or how they can they can advance their careers. Testing, using data from the tests to modify your teaching as opposed to modifying the test. Is an internationally standardized test really the best way to assess someone's understanding? Parents, most of them think we have only their child in the class. Ours. Yes, we are accountable and responsible for a lot, but we deserve some sort of work-life balance. Pay. Teachers today are so qualified, but our pay doesn't reflect that. Schools. Not public. Using test and inspection data to increase fees, thereby stressing teachers to do everything else but teach well. Documentation. Class display. Etc. On inspection days. Being evaluated on 3 1 hour lessons. If my students don't behave for 3 hours I could be an ineffective teacher. Tell me how that makes sense. I was a teacher for only a year, but this is what I feel about the experience. Wasted time due to high variation in skill and knowledge in a single class. You can't put the kid who can barely read in the same class with a kid who finishes the exam in 10 minutes. One of them is wasting their time. Probably both of them. This means classes need to be stratified more. Nobody likes putting the stupid kids in the stupid class, but sometimes that's what helps them the most. Wasted time due to class management. The material I taught over a year could be covered in two months if the kids were actually there to learn. The first few years of school should be spent drilling the importance of education to children, so they know why they're learning the stuff they are learning. This goes hand in hand with the following point. Wasted time due to crappy curriculum. The first few years of school should be about socializing, self-control, reading, writing, arithmetic, and self-studying techniques. Schools would be immensely more successful if they focused on these basic tools so they are not a hindrance for the rest of the child's academic life. This last one has nothing to do with education. Help the kids who need help. One of the students in my class showed obvious signs of sexual abuse, but all the school could do was give her a little counseling. That kid would undoubtedly grow up to have a crappy life because the system couldn't help her. This is really worse than all of the above, but it's out of the scope of education. Friend of a teacher here. She is not allowed to put a cross next to the thing the student got wrong. Only a dot as it can lowers the child's self-esteem. Another one was that she's not allowed to tell the student what they did wrong if they threw tables and chairs. Did verbal assault or physical assault etc as that may damage a child's self-esteem and as a result can only give advice on how the child can improve moving forward on the subject. This is a primary school teaching pupils age 511. At some point we started trying to sterilize education. We wanted kids to know more and more, but we also trusted the decency of humans less. So the result is teachers who are held to saint-like standards being expected to raise children, make them moral citizens, and spoon-feed them standardized knowledge. Teachers are encouraged to be robots now. You can't connect or be a meaningful part of a student's life without seeming wrong. Meanwhile, we are trying to turn students into data points. It just doesn't work that way. I remember my first grade teacher used to hug us, hold our hands, bake for us on Fridays, even feed us. She was one of the sweetest women I've ever met and I have the fondest memories of that time. I don't see teachers being able to do that these days. 
My mom is a perfect example of what's wrong with education in this country. My mom loves science. She loves studying it, talking about it, but most of all she loves to teach. She went to college specifically with the intention of becoming a biology teacher. When I was 10 years old, she got a job teaching biology, chemistry, and anatomy at our local high school. She loved it. Of the four courses offered at that school that were considered the hardest, mom taught three of them. She was required by the local school system to get a certain amount of continuing education points every year either by taking classes, attending conferences, internships, etc. Mom would, in a single summer, accumulate enough points to fulfill 10 years of her required points. Every summer, she did it because she loved it. To this day, 30 plus years later, many of her former students stay in touch, send her emails, letters, postcards, etc. Because she taught them to love science, and now they are scientists, biologists, and often teachers. When she retired, and moved to New York State, she began looking for a job teaching in her area. Because she had taught in Nice before, if she accumulated enough years teaching in Nice, she could get a pension from both states. Nobody could hire her. They couldn't afford her, not because she wanted too much, but because they couldn't afford the teachers they had. One school had her working part time as a librarian. It was over an hour's drive away. They couldn't even afford to fix the roof, much less bring on another teacher. Eventually she got work as a college professor which she's still doing today. She still enjoys it, but I can tell she misses high school. There's many things wrong with our education system, but, to me, this doesn't get mentioned enough. Teachers like mom should be in demand. Teachers who love their subject almost as much as they love sharing it with future generations. Instead, we offer them a salary that would be an insult to many fast food workers, and say you're so lucky you get summers off even though we know deep down that they almost certainly need a summer job just to make their rent. Also, my mom is awesome. In Ontario, Canada it's the amount of problems the teacher is supposed to single-handedly fix. Everything falls on the teacher. I have 27 grade 4 stroke 5s with 27 different problems and needs, but I spend most of my day on 3 or 4 of them whose main issue is that no one has ever asked them to be responsible for themselves. So I have to constantly put out fires all day long while ignoring the kids who are ready to learn. I wish I could have an extra adult in the room whose job was to work with the kids who aren't ready to learn in a class environment. I go to sleep hating the fact that I have to ignore most of my class all day. I'm a tutor, so obviously I have selection bias since I only really see the richer kids with more motivation. Passing along kids before they actually understand the material. It's so infuriating seeing people who can do calculus perfectly but don't know how to work with fractions. There's just too much pressure on teachers to not fail kids even when they really should. Maybe just grade inflation in general. The people making the rules at the legislative level are not teachers. They see shiny new research that promises results and mandate that this is the way it should be for everyone now. The breadth of school situations and needs across the country is massive, and it's the same case even within a school. I teach algebra too, and it's basically a required course, but not all of my students should be taking it. I have very smart students who will go on to do just fine in life who will have no use for systems of equations. But it's on the standardized tests, and those are just about all the state has time to look at when evaluating schools. I just got fired. Education is now a cash for grades business. The department said student satisfaction is more important than learning. Incredibly, they actually put that in writing. The parents and the students and the system. Apart from that it's great. You forgot cafeteria food. We expect too much of teachers and pay them too little. My mom is the sole computer teacher for our entire high school that has over 600 students, the amount of test papers at home is horrifying, and pay is still garbage. It's customer service, college in Canada, you would probably call that high school, or college, whatever, you have to answer every student email in 48 hours, most of them are meaningless. A few examples, I didn't prepare my presentation because I broke up with my boyfriend so I need two extra weeks to recover hey, it's my sister's birthday so it's okay if I don't come to class, you will just have to change the attendance sheet, it usually takes about one hour a day and it's never about the lesson. 
where everything is made up, and the points don't matter. The fact that the system doesn't take into account the fact that children are not the same, not every child is, or even should be, college bound, but every child is put onto a college track, whether they can keep up or not, and instead of making them keep up, they slow down learning for everyone else. I teach at a poor district while having student teach at a rich district, I don't understand how anyone could think hard work is enough, these students start way below their richer peers. I would answer but I was upgrading all night long, I am so overworked and so underpay, I am so tired. You have been visited by reverse psychology doggo, please see do not comment and do not subscribe to up do through it, thank you for your attention, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video, or don't, either way, have a great day you magnificent people.